Welcome back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this class, I'll be teaching you how to make this beautiful boo boo with basket design on the sleeves, on the neckline, as you can see right there on the video. So this style is actually trending. So you can see the yoke part of it. You can make it rounded, you can make it squared. You can have any design of your choice using the same principle, okay? So in this class, I'll be teaching you the tips and tricks to making this beautiful basket boo-boo. It can be a fitted gown, it can be a sheep gown, you can use the methods for everything. Please stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. So to start off this tutorial, we'll be making use of uh, our Ankara print okay so what i'm using here is my ankara print and this ankara you know it usually comes at six yards so we are going to make use of the whole six yards because we have a whole lot of work to do right here so if you are sewing this dress you have to note that you have a whole lot of work to do so now this uh, basket bubu kaftan you can make it in different uh, ways you can even use it to make a fitted gown if you want so as you can see in the video there we have it as a shift gown we have it as a boob but for this class it's the same principle so i'm going to show you how to go about it no matter where you want to attach this basket boob okay so the first thing i'm going to do is to cut out my normal boob so we are going to cut out our normal boob which i'll be using three yards of ankara from here to make okay usually when you are making your boo boo is um you need about three or three and a half yards depending on your height and on your size as well so out of these six years of ankara now i will just go ahead and you know i'm going to place it the way we have our boo boo so I will be folding about three and a half. So how am I going to do that? I'll just go ahead and fold three and a half, put three and a half yards on fold to take my desired measurement. So now you can see I place my Ankara on fold. Can you see? So from this folded edge, Okay, so I always like to fold it and get my actual length because before I cut out the excess, okay, that makes up the six yards. So you have to place it on fold and make sure you have your desired length. So here you can see I have 60 inches as my desired length. So at this 60 inches right now, that is where I'm going to cut out. So I will just rule my line because I'm going to cut out from this 60 inches right now, okay? So since I've gotten my 60 inches, which is the length I desire for this um, dress, I'll just simply cut it out. As you can see, following the chalk line so the remaining of it that's what we are going to use to work on the dress so so you can see i've placed it on fold okay so you place them on fold and once you have placed it on fold make sure you arrange it from beginning to the hem this way can you see that so once that is done the next I placed it on fold as you can see right now so on this edge that is going to be our starting point and the folded edge this part is going to be center front and center back so the first thing we are going to do is to take our measurement right here so I'm going to take my neck width measurement so the neck width measurement is three and a half that's what I will be using neck width is three and a half okay back neck width and uh, neck depth is one and half okay neck back neck depth is one and half then you connect 
from one and half connect to three and half then after that we are going to take the measurement of front neck depth front neck depth is three and half okay then i'm going to connect the three and half i'll just connect it to what i have at the three and half so i'll just come from here and i'm going to create the neckline I see. so once that is done the shoulder measurement here i'm working with eight inches and this is my eight inches so from this eight inches the whole of this will be my sleeve so unless you don't want your sleeve that long but i want it to be at 14 inches i want to take the whole of this dress all right so after that is done the next thing we are going to do now is to mark out the booboo -boo sleeve so from this point i love to open up my booboo -boo by 12. so this is 12 i'll add half an inch to it so you just make a mark at that point some people can go as far as opening at 13 too but i think 12 is okay half an inch for sewing allowance okay then after that i'll also place my tape again and from this um, folded edge i'm going to take the measurement of my hip so my hip measurement here falls at 29 okay so this is 29 inches i'll mark so it's at this hip line that i'm going to take my hip measurement so the hip measurement I'm working with here is 46 divided by 4 will give me 11 and a half. I'll mark. I usually like to add 3 inches to my booboo and then add half inch. That is 3 and a half as a whole for sewing allowance. So by the time I've done that, if I measure from here now, I'm going to have 15 inches for everything. So if you want it that big, you can just go ahead and add 4 inches. So of course, this booboo is actually big. So you can add after your uh, weight, uh, your hip divided by 4, you can add 4 inches depending on how you want. But for me, I just want to work with 15. From here to here, everything I have here is 15 inches. So I'll go ahead and also mark out the 15 inches from here so that 15 inches i'm going to take the take it straight from the hem i'll connect it to the to the hip then i'll come back to the 12 inches mark for my booboo -boo sleeve i'll also measure the 15 inches which i calculated and then i will take it straight to form the boo, boo dress can you see that then at this point i'll just create the boo, boo curve so now so before we go ahead and cut please we need to create that uh, design that basket design and that basket design we are going to create it right here using our shoulder measurement so my shoulder I'm working with here is 8 inches. That is 16 divided by 2 is 8. Then the I'm going to create the depth of this um, um, this booboo, -boo, this basket. I'm going to create the depth from here by 7 inches. So by the time we attach it, we have it at 7 and a half. So that is the yoke. I call it the yoke. So I'll just measure this 7 and a half from here. 7 inches, sorry. I measure it from here and create a straight line. So this straight line will now I will use it to determine how to shape in this yoke. So I'll measure my eight inches, transfer the eight inches of shoulder to that yoke line and create a box. A box. So your your yoke can be a box. Your yoke can also be a curve. So. I just want to create this curve, but I'm ju I just want to freehand it because my pattern ruler might not actually give me 
what I want. That is, if I sit it down, it might not give me. So you need to be creative by. You can see that. So that is going to be the yoke of this dress. So what I'll actually do now is we are going to cut out this yoke so that we have both back and neck, uh, front neckline. So this is what I'm going to do. I've created the basket and this is what we are using to create that basket. So you can make it as deeper as you wish, but I don't want at the end of the day it will expose the bust. So you can just go ahead and place your tape on your neck and take the measurement of where you want it to be from the neckline. So this is my neckline. So if I want to place my tape on the neck to determine where I want it to sit. So I just place my tape on my neck from the natural neckline is sitting at exactly that point so let us just go ahead and work with what we have right here. so now i'm done connecting it to the shoulder line but since you are going to cut it out i will advise you come in by 0 0.5 from your actual shoulder so it does not you know slip up or open up so much so here i'll just mark my 0 0.5 okay so by the time i stitch half an inch it returns back to the normal shoulder i believe you understand so this 0 0.5 now, I will just connect it back to the neck depth. Can you see that? So instead of cutting from the shoulder, I will cut in so I have half an inch to stitch. So what we have here from the shoulder is 7 inches, okay? So that by the time we are done sewing, we have it at 7 and a half. So I will just go ahead and take this measurement, uh, the cutting. I will cut my yoke, so I call this the yoke, and that is what we are going to work with at the end of the day. So here is the yoke. So this yoke, I'm not going to cut out anything yet on this till we are done. So once we are done with this exercise of the basket, then we are going to cut out this neckline on the basket. So that is what we are going to use to control the basket. So I've cut out the yoke now. I'm going to set it aside. Then I'll go ahead and cut out the sleeve area. But before you cut out the sleeve area, because we also have the basket design on the sleeve area. So this line, which is your hip line, just try and do what? Extend it a little bit. So from this line, I'm going to go in by two inches and mark. I'll go in from that two inches. That is how I, I, that is the reason I need to extend it because I need a straight line on that point. So I'll just go ahead and mark a straight line from the beginning this way. Can you see that? So once I've done that, this part will become the basket part of this dress, which we are going to attach. Then I'll also go down from this point, which is the shoulder. I'll also take the measurement of my, I'm taking the measurement of the basket for the hem. So the basket for the hem, I would like it to start from 40, uh, 48 inches. So this is 48 inches. I will just do what? mark that basket line so the whole of this will form the basket for us from that 48 inches so now we are going to cut out the side of this dress first the ubu we are cutting it out then after cutting out we'll now go ahead and separate the baskets okay so this is the normal booboo if you are just making a normal booboo you can see that so now these basket designs I'm going to name them the one we have on the neckline which we cut out I'll name it one the sleeve I will name it two 
the one on the hem i will name it three okay so i'll have that those numbers so number one i've taken it away then i will cut out number two so anywhere i cut we are going to create a basket design for it so make sure you put everything together place your notch at the shoulder because this is the shoulder point that separates back and front so i'll place my notch make sure you have your notch so that when we are we start attaching it it will not be difficult i will cut out this booboo from here can you see that that is number two i'll set it aside and then i'll come over to number three and cut out the number three but I, I wouldn't want to cut out the number three yet okay so now we want to start creating the yoke for the neckline first so this is what we cut out as number one for the yoke for the neckline so for the yoke for the neckline you need your brown pattern paper so this brown pattern paper that is where we are going to create the basket designs okay so now we are going to create the entire what we have right here on the brown pattern paper. So the first thing you do for your brown pattern paper now is to with this brown pattern paper now I'm going to recreate the yoke neckline exactly how we did it on the fabric. I'm going to mark out the neckline exactly for the back and for the front as you can see. Okay, so now I'm going to add my seam allowance of one one inch. Okay, so make sure you add one inch to your seam allowances. So here I'm creating the design. So I'm going to first of all highlight the center front, highlight the shoulder line, and this other shoulder line before we begin. So now you are starting now i'm going to divide the lines at 1.5 inch interval for the vertical lines and you can see me ruling all the vertical lines at 1.5 inch so um i will still keep my ruler straight from this point i will get to the neckline i will cross then i'll also keep my ruler straight from here here i already have the shoulder line so please make sure you have the shoulder shoulder although i have my notch on it then i'll continue this way for the back i'll keep my ruler straight so that is what i'll keep doing till i complete the complete the process for us to cut out the strips and i've already marked it at intervals of 1.5 inches and i'm cutting them out accordingly right now i'm done cutting out the strips as you can see i have a whole lot of them so that is where the work is so now all right so you can see i've already started sewing but i just thought of showing you how to go about this okay so now i will use one of the lines right here to show you so of course this is the shoulder line where i made my notch so i'm going to sew all the lines continuously this way just as i did right there so this is my one and a half inch strip which i cut i'll just fold it just a little don't go too much of it just a little very very little i think this uh, this um, method is better than going into your machine to sew long long strips before you proceed so by the time you fold so as you are folding you know what you want you know the width you want so just come in and keep it right at the center can you see right at the center and at that center i have it make sure it goes out this way then on that part you fold then you have to drop your presser foot so what i'm doing now is stop stitching so as i'm working on it you can see what i'm doing i will start stitching right on top of it so as i'm sewing i'll be arranging it at the center so what i'm checking is to be sure i have it at the center so if you follow this method you will have this work done without much waste of time okay so i'm making sure i have it 
So once I get to the end, so you can see what I'm doing to make sure I have the exact width. So once I get to the end, I'll turn it this way, drop it again at the tip of it, and I'll stitch that way. That way. So this is what I'm going to do till I get to the end. So you can see what I have right here. So at the end of the day, I'll just go ahead and follow the shape and cut out. Follow the shape and cut out. So I'll repeat all of this. And once I get to this line, I'll place it on top and stitch at first. Let me do that. Now you can see I'm done filling up all the basket, as you can see. But if you look at the center back, if you remember, this is the back and this is the center back. I asked you to leave it uh, without the vertical line, but I crossed the horizontal line. So we are going to attach our loop at this point. So I'll separate it. That is the back neckline. So now, the first thing we are going to do, I'll just go ahead and stitch my bias of course you know how to go about i'm still using the 1.5 inch to do that so this is the 1.5 so the normal way we sew our bias when we have our bias i'll turn it to the back and here i'll open up and stitch at 0 0.5 so i'll stitch down at 0 0.5 right now that I will turn it around. So let me just cut out what I have here. I'll turn it around, bring it to the front. Can you see that? So I'll bring it to the front and make, just follow what I'm doing right here. So what I'm trying to do now is to ensure I make that casing for, for the back as it is right there on the video so can you see so I've actually made the casing so when you are stitching you have to be careful all right so that is exactly what I'm going to do for the other part so you can see what I have right there okay so I'll cut it out now and repeat the same thing for the other. Right, so this is the center back where we have the we are going to have our button so you can see what it looks at the back of it. So now we want to finish up our neckline with the bias. So I'll still use the 1.5 inch strip. I'm going to fold it in. That is the first thing you do. Then turn this to this to the back. Place it at the edge. Can you see? Then I'll begin to sew at 0 0.5. So I'm back stitching. So what I'm just doing is trying to uh, finish up the neckline. So I'll sew round, round. So once I'm getting to the other end, I will now cut off at one inch so I'll be able to have or half an inch okay so the one inch is too much just go ahead and cut half an inch and then fold it back and you see make sure it aligns at that point and then all right so after that I'll come back from that point and I'll take it all the way to the front because what we are doing is like piping our bias so I'll just do this the normal way we do finish up our neckline like this so you have to be very very careful when working on this 
neckline. Okay, so you have to be careful of because of the pepper. So I'll keep folding and be following the neckline. Can you see? And they are folding it in, discovering the edges and forming the neck line. So I'll do that till I get to the end. So once you get to the end, you still fold it in the normal way we do in our bias. Then I'll finish it up. This is what the neckline looks like. If you turn it to the other side, you can see we have finished everything. So the next thing is to attach the loop for the button. I love to go use my bias. You can also use your fabric. So this is my bias. I like to cut my loop at 2 inches. So from here, this is 2 inches. I just cut out and then fold in the bias this way and turn it this way to form my loop. Can you see? So my loop, I'm going to sew it at this other end. So you can actually sew it anywhere you wish to sew, but I just wish to stitch it right here. Line. So this is what you're expected to have at the end of the day. So here, I have my loop and my button is going to be here as you can see. So I'm going to set this one aside till it's time to start attaching them to the dress. Then we'll talk about the sleeves right now and the sleeve is number two. So this is number two which is the sleeve so you can see what we have for the sleeve. So for this sleeve I'm just going to use one to demonstrate to you. So this one I'm going to demonstrate to you. So for everything we are using, anywhere you want this to be, you have to also use your pepper. So I pepper and place my pepper on hold. Okay, so let's place it this way. So we'll be able to accommodate what we have right here. So here, this is it. Number two, I'll place it in the same fold. So this is how you are going to place it in the same fold. So once you place it secure with your pins, I'll secure with my pins. So now this is my sleeve. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is on the upper part I'll have I'll add half an inch for stitching. So after adding half an inch for your stitching, then we are going to extend the length of this sleeve. Okay, remember that we cut it out at 14 inches when we were drafting from the shoulder. So if this is the 14 inches, I'm going to, this is the 14 inches, I want to extend it a little more. Or, in other ways, you can just measure from here. Just make it, let's make it at 8 or 9 inches, okay? Or let's make it at 8 inches, so it's not too much. So, that 8 inches is enough to have this. So, I will just go ahead and follow this line and make a square of it. So this square of it I have made, I'm going to take off number two. So whatever I'm doing here, I'm doing it for two sleeves. So here is going to be um, fold. So I'll just go ahead and cut out what I have right here, as you can see. So I'll just cut. So like I said, I'm making it for two sleeves. So if you're embarking on this project, you actually need to be ready to work because there are so much work on this dress. So can you see? I'll place it because it's for two sleeves. So I'll just place it here. And then 
I'll press it out. I'll press it out like this. So now I have it for two sleeves. So what I'm going to do now, this is the part on fold, which is the sleeve drawn line. So I'm going to use one to mark out. So normally, you know how we do that. So you just start from the beginning to mark your one and half. So I'll mark my one and half. So from here, I'll place my tape to mark my one and half. That is how I'll keep marking it till I complete my one and half. I'll complete my one and half. Okay, so I've completed my one and half. So I'll come this side and mark the diagonal parts at the same one and half. Okay, so I'll start ruling my lines. So you can mark the down part of it so your line will be straight. But if you can keep your ruler straight, you can do that too. So I will do it for the both of them. And I'll go over to the machine and I will stitch the same way I've been stitching the neckline. Let me do that. So you can see what I have right here for the both sleeves, okay? So now I'll set them aside and we'll begin to work on the neckline. So this is the neckline which we just finished. And you can see I inserted my loop for my button. So we are going to sew this dress. We are going to sew this upper yoke. I call it the yoke part of it. We are going to first attach it to the dress. So when we were cutting this dress, remember we took the measurement of the down part. I wanted to actually add uh, the no, for number three. The basket okay so if you want to add the basket all you will do is to cut out from here replace it with your brown pattern paper draw your lines and cut out your 0 0.5 in just the same way we did for this but I'm just um, okay with what I have right here I just want to leave mine without attaching it okay I don't want the damper to have the basket but at least you have an idea of how to go about the dress on the thumbnail. So now we'll go over to the attachment. So this is the shoulder part which I notched and I'm going to notch the center front and center back. I've made my notch. So I'm going to open this dress. So I'll take here to be my center front so this one is for the center front i'll place it this way and secure with my pin so you have to you need your pin very much available so i'll secure it so i'm pinning it in a way i can stitch on top of it then i'll take it to the shoulder you can see the shoulder parts i'll come here on the shoulder part so that means this dress you are going to practically open it up that is why you need to work on the neckline before attaching any other parts so here i'll secure the shoulder parts so i know uh, why I'm pinning them at this strategic point so they don't shift when you are stitching them. So once you have held it, you come back to the shoulder. This is the shoulder for this. I'll find the notch for the shoulder. I'll also secure it with my pin. Then the center back, here is it. I'll now bring this to the center back as well. 
this is the center back i'll secure it with my pin so i'll start to sew from this center back right now so as i'm sewing i'll be arranging it i'll be sewing directly on the paper i'll be arranging it like that like that can you see till i go around let me do it. all right so now i've already started sewing from the notch of the center back so i'm sewing at 0 0.5 inch so this is how you are going to place it when sewing can you see so the upper part please be careful you don't tear the paper as you are stitching so the odd upper part that is where you are going to stitch and as you are stitching make sure you align this that's why i have to show you what i'm doing right here on my machine so you have to make sure you align this so can you see so here is matching up with the pin i had on the shoulder line so you have to follow the curves on the yoke so you'll be able to have the seat appropriately without issue can you see that so you take your time to arrange it make sure you have it appropriately so i'll just repin this part or take away the pin so i have i have it sewn or stitched at that point can you see that so make sure you pin at those strategic points that is going to guide you so I'll keep sewing that way. So the most important thing is that the curves, like I have this this curve here, you have to follow the curves accordingly. Can you see? You have to follow the curves accordingly. So once you follow them accordingly, they just match up exactly. So I'll keep sewing till I get to the end. So after sewing, please make sure you notch the rounded area. Very important. So it will be easy to top stitch. Alright, so I'm done top stitching. You can see what I have. I've sewn this and top stitch. And you can see I've finished off the, the same way I did the neckline. That's how I did this part. Okay. So the next thing I'll do is to turn everything to the side. So from, from the armhole from the sleeve so make sure you match your sleeve and sew at half an inch which is the same allowance we added so let me do that but you need to apply steam to it so i'm just using my piece of fabric with steam to make it a little more softer so we can remove it all right so with the wetness it's very easy to take off the papers right now okay at least it will make the paper easy to take off. So I'll keep taking them off this way. So just take your time and pull out all the paper. So I'm going to do that for all of them. And we are done with this dress.